Hi there, I'm Professor Tim Carey and I'd, I'd like to explain to you a little bit about an exciting new psychological therapy called the Method of Levels or, or MOL. MOL is based on the principles of perceptual control theory or PCT and from a PCT perspective there are three principles that are, that are important for MOL. The principles are control, conflict and reorganisation. Control is the principle of normal everyday functioning for, for human beings. So from this perspective it's, it's considered that all we do all day, every day from the time we're born till the time we die is control the things that are important to us. So little babies who, who are lying in their, in their beds crying, their crying is an attempt to control their environment in order to get the cuddling that they want or the feeding that they want or, or the changed nappy that they, that they want. Control also happens for, for mature um, adult human beings. So, for example, we, we control the way that we say things. So we might say things in one way to one person and we might say pretty much the same thing in a completely different way to another person because we're, we're controlling our relationship or we're controlling the, the impression that we're trying to convey to the other person. So control happens routinely all day every day when we drive our car from home to work we're, we're using a control process um, when we keep our relationships or our appearance the way we we want it to be then we're using a control process when we do things to keep our emotions the way that we we like them to be we're using a control process as well so that's the first principle control and it explains um, the way things happen f for for normal um, routine functioning the second principle is conflict and conflict explains how control gets disrupted so how normal routine functioning can be can be impaired or or interrupted and conflict is is pretty much the way that we we would understand it to be that that conflict occurs when when control when people try and control two incompatible things at the same time so if you think about control being um, the idea of making the world be the way we want it to be that that's a, a fairly simple but also a fairly accurate um, example of the phenomenon of control then problems arise when we have two opposite things that we're trying to make be the way we want them to be at the same time so for example if we have um, a career that we're trying to build and, and a, a, an idea about how successful it should be but we also have a, a family with close relationships that we're trying to develop as well then at times pursuing career goals can not just impact on but actually interfere with pursuing family goals and sometimes pursuing family goals can interrupt the pursuit of career goals so so that would describe a situation of of conflict um, sometimes people might might like being social and might like interacting with with other people but they also might like spending time on their own and in that situation um, if those two goals are in the one head at the same time tension and and distress can arise as a result of the incompatibility of the goals so from a PCT perspective the the basic formulation of psychological distress is is a conflict model that psychological distress arises through the the incompatibility of important goals that people are trying to pursue at the same time. So conflict is the second principle. Control is the first. Control is, is what we do. Conflict is what interrupts what we do. And reorganization is the third principle. Reorganization is a, is a basic learning mechanism. It's a very powerful learning mechanism. In fact, from a PCT perspective, it's the the learning mechanism that we inherit. So it's not a learning style or a learning approach that we have to learn. Um, it's a way of learning or a way of solving problems that we're, that we're born with, that we inherit. And it's, it's a very simple, as I said, but very powerful learning mechanism so that the basic idea from a reorganization perspective is that when there's, um, when control is unable to, to occur over a period of time, so when there's error going on or an inability to control things, reorganization happens through random changes being made and the effect on control being monitored. So if, if a random change occurs and as a result of that random change,
control improves, then that change will persist. If control doesn't improve, then another random change would occur and the effect on control of it would be monitored. And if it improves control, then it would continue. So reorganization is regarded as the most fundamental form of learning, but also a very powerful form of learning that helps us learn to walk and talk and, and solve seemingly intractable problems. So control, conflict and reorganization are the three principles upon which MOL is based. So the practice of MOL occurs, occurs very effectively and, and very efficiently with the therapist and MOL therapist having two main goals. Their first goal is to help the person talk about whatever the problem is that they, that they want to talk about or whatever is bothering them at the moment. And the second goal is to look for um, signs or indicators that they might have become aware of other things while they're talking about their problem. And those signs or indicators we call disruptions to the, the dialogue that the person is, is producing. So as they're talking, they'll pause or look away or smile or, or they might frown. And we take those observable indicators as signs that they might have just briefly become aware of, of something else. And when that occurs, we ask them what that, what that something else might be. So we might say something like, what occurred to you just then? Or, or what popped into your mind as, as we were talking about this topic. And the idea is to, to help shift the person's awareness to different areas in their, in their neural network or in their perceptual hierarchy. We do that because as an MOL therapist, we assume that when someone comes to see us in psychological distress, they're in psychological distress because they're conflicted. Our approach then is to help them become aware of both sides of the conflict and also to become aware of what might be going on behind the conflict. And when they can do that, when their awareness can go to the areas behind or above the conflict, then their normal, natural, their own individual reorganizing processes will help to resolve the conflict that occurs and restore control where it had been disrupted. So control, conflict and reorganization are the three principles. The two basic goals of MOL are to help people talk about their problem and to do as a, as a therapist whatever you need to do to help a person feel comfortable to talk more and more about their problem and to explore it in, in more detail than they may have before. So that's the first goal. And the second goal is to pick up on any shifts in awareness that, that might be indicated by by changes in, in posture or, t or voice tone or, or the rate of the speech they're producing. So, so little pauses or slowing down of what they say or, or something like that. So three principles and two goals. There's a, a website called www.pctweb.org that explains perceptual control theory in a lot more detail and, and has a lot of resources for perceptual control theory. And there's another website www.methodoflevels.com.au that has lots of resources about MOL and explains MOL in a lot more detail. So I hope you find it really interesting and, a, and an exciting therapy to become involved with. Thanks.